We finally got around to making another short film, and this one is definitely one of our favorites. If you haven't seen it, check it out before this one because spoilers ahead. So let's take an in-depth look into how we made our short film, Bentley. For this short, we wanted to go a different route than what we usually do. When writing it, I wanted to add some cool backstory and a disturbing element to it in a unique way. Adding the intro with the small backstory was a way to get the audience intrigued and maybe stay a while. Making the story come to life was super important and I was really able to move this story with the actual photo. Making this took a really long time because I was really unsure how I would do it. I made some concept art and then tried drawing it myself, which I am 100% not an actual artist. And yeah, that did not turn out so well. But I went out on a limb and decided to do it digitally. I took a picture of myself on my tippy toes to give the illusion that I was in the air. I then went straight into Photoshop with it. I actually loved this because this meant that I would be able to be in the film as the antagonist or this creature, if you will. And I liked that I could have a cameo for once. I have been in other films where you can't really see my face, such as Rem as the moving blanket, Misprint as the mask killer, and even old films like Suffocate. But this time, I could have a much more important role as the antagonist. So in Photoshop, I took a lot of background images like an old Victorian mansion, trees, mountains, skies, everything you could see in the photo. After many hours of compositing and working on it, this was the final product. I'm very happy with how it turned out and it was a bit odd editing a picture of myself like this for so long, but it's just a fictional story and not real of course. So there's a surprising amount of VFX shots in this film. Initially, I only intended for one. Then that one turned into two, and eventually two turned into six. For the wide shots where we see the frame, I needed to add the actual digital photo. I printed them out at the store, but the print quality was really bad and very dark compared to the actual image. I was just feeling very stressed out by this, so that's why I decided to turn it into a VFX shot. So in Premiere, I made a mask over where the picture was, made it dark to add those shadows behind the actual composited image. I then added the final image and worked some perspective distortion, some grain, dust marks, and some camera movement, and this was the final product. I repeated this process for two other shots where the frame is shown this far away, but for the close-up shots, I actually shot those with the actual printed photos. This shot is just the light bulb turning, which was basically just a mess around my thumb. I went in there and I turned it slightly and just made a small mask around my fingers. Once again, this is another shot that I did not think was going to turn out as well as it did. And finally, for VFX, the final shot. I did it in After Effects, and tracking everything on my face just took so many tries. I did the classic white eye mask, which I think turned out great. All of the scarring on my face was just tracked onto the same null object of my eyes. Since the flashlight goes onto my face from being dark, I decided to keyframe the opacity on each layer, and after really taking my time on it, I think it came out pretty decent. The thing with these shots is that it's not perfect. That's why 2 seconds on these shots is still effective, and you can't really pinpoint the mistakes in it. I'm still happy with the final product though. So lighting this one was a bit tricky. We didn't want this one to be monochromatic like how Rem was, just sticking to one color. So for this one, we turned on all of the lamps that we had in the living room and still used some blue lighting for where the windows come in and I feel like the colors mix very well. The blue and orange look is very commonly used and they are complementary colors so they obviously work well together so that's why we chose this color scheme. Every footstep was actually recorded in post because the raw footage that we recorded from the road mic just did not pick it up crisp enough. So I put shoes on and walked around near where the mic was on wood floors just to replicate how it actually would sound. My style is filming what I can with my actors and then saving whatever I don't need them for to film myself. One of my favorite examples of this is this shot right here. Yes, that is my hand slamming into the bottom of the door. I cannot even lie, this shot took over 15 tries of me slamming my hand under the door. This is taking it to the extreme, but it was worth it for the shot. So the original score for this one was done by Frank, as always, and we had a lot of fun working on this together, and we love how it came out. We feel like the strings mixed with some synths just really mixed perfectly for it, and overall we are super happy with how it turned out. 
we want to close out the year strong and not rush anything. So this is going to be the last video that we put out this year. We hope you guys have very safe holidays, stay safe, and have a great rest of your year. We will see you guys back in 2021.